Hi, Lawrence Rust from Education Services here at Juniper Networks. If you're interested in learning more about AppQuas, be sure to check out our Advanced Juno Security course. And AppQuas also shows up on our Juniper Networks Certified Professional Security Exam. So if you're pursuing a JNCIP SEC, you'll want to know it. For full details on the course, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the class. Now let's get to your Learning Byte. Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer in education services within Juniper Networks and today we will be discussing the basic app quas learning byte. So at this point you might be asking yourself what is app quas? Well app quas allows for application based classification. It's also a part of the app secure suite within the SRX devices. So the app secure suite you might be aware of there's also other modules. There's an app ID module, there's an app firewall module, there's an app track module as well, and app quas is just another module in that suite. And app quas allows us to rate limit, DSCP remarkings, forwarding class assignment, loss priorities, all based on application traffic. We can classify that to whatever type of application is coming through, whether it be a standard application or a nested application. However, this last sub-bullet here, no bandwidth guarantee with AppQuas. And that's because we have the built-in class of service functionality in Junos that can give us that bandwidth guarantee. And the great part about it is AppQuas works great with a built-in class of service. So if we need that bandwidth guarantee and we need application-based classification, we can use AppQuas and class of service combined. However, in this learning byte, we're not going to focus on class of service here. Since this is more of a basic app quas learning byte, I'm going to save class of service functionality and bandwidth guarantee for another different learning byte. So definitely, please keep watch for that learning byte. And so with that, let's carry on. Okay, let's talk about how app quas works. We have a client on the far left here, an FTP server on the far right, an SRX device sitting in the middle. And what's happening here is the client is downloading traffic from the FTP server. And as application traffic enters the SRX, it matches an AppQuas profile, then that traffic can be reclassified and or rate limited. Rate limiting can be from client to server or server to client. In this instance, since we're concerned about the FTP download, that's definitely server to client. And something else to point out here is you can apply different rate limiters in the client to server direction and also from the server to client direction. So you don't have to use the same rate limiter for that. So it's very, very flexible. All right, so let's talk about an example and get straight to the CLI. What we're doing here is we have clients on the left, an SRX device in the middle, and a server on the right. And something special about the server is that it's running multiple functions or multiple services here. It has FTP, SCP, and NTP. So it's running multiple services here that the users are using it for, but we have a problem. There's too much FTP traffic being transferred from the users up to the FTP server. It's kind of choking out those other applications from reaching the FTP server, or reaching that server over there with multiple functions. And so we want to rate limit that FTP upload. And so we'll see how we do that. So let's jump to the CLI. All right, here's our SRX device. Let's jump into configuration and then AppQuas is going to be configured under class of service and then application traffic control hierarchy. And here we're going to configure a rate limiter. We're just going to call this FTP-RL for rate limiter. And there's two major things you need to worry about with rate limiters. The bandwidth limit and the burst size limit. The bandwidth limit is pretty straightforward. What do you want to rate limit the bandwidth to? So with this we're going to set 3000 kilobits per second. Now granted that's a little small and it probably would be too small in a production network but being in a lab network we want to set that small so we can demo the functionality of app clause. So we want to set the bandwidth limit to 3000. Then we want to set the burst size limit. Now this is a little different. This might be a little more difficult to figure out because with the burst size limit when you define it 
you want to define a value that is large enough but not too large. You don't want the whole transfer possibly going through in a single burst for small files. But you don't want to set it too small either because if there's not enough specified, you know, you don't specify a large enough burst size limit, there may not be enough of burst size limit for the token bucket algorithm and your traffic might get lost and it probably will get lost if you set it way too low and we'll show you this. This is actually kind of cool. Something else to point out is that you can't set it larger than 6400 times, so 6400 times the bandwidth limit. And notice how this is in bytes and the bandwidth limit is in kilobits per second. And you don't need to try to convert that to try to figure out, okay, what is bytes per second versus kilobits per second? Because, you know, we do things in kilobits and megabits per second when we're talking about transfer rates. And so that's a little confusing. And all that means there with that, the 6,400 times that number that you specify for the bandwidth limit. So in this example, we can't specify something larger than 3,000 times 6,400 for the bandwidth limit in bytes. So just keep that in mind. It's not that big of a deal because if you do set something larger than that, it's just going to give you a commit error. So something to be aware of. But I'm going to set this to a really low limit. This is way low, 100 bytes for the burst size limit. That is really low even for 3 megabits a second. And I'll show you what happens when we do that. And then we're going to edit the actual rule set. And we have rules in there that we're going to edit. I'm just going to call that rule 1. We have to set a match condition. We're going to specify the application that we're looking for. We're going to look for Junos FTP. And this is the application that's found in the application ID database. Keep that in mind because what we're going to do here is we're going to reference the app ID module to get that when the traffic comes through to get the actual application itself. And then we're going to set the actual rate limit and we're going to go client to server because we're pushing traffic to the FTP server and we're going to set that rate limit to FTP-RL rate limiter. And so this is what we configured. We configured the rate limiters and then we configured the rule set and we're not done yet. We have to configure the actual policy to reference the rule set. So we're going to do this from a zone to you know the specific zone. Now granted if you're using global policies you wouldn't use the zone context here but here I have it set up with uh, zone based policies. And we're going to call this the FTP clause policy we're set a match condition of source address any, destination address any, and application. We're going to set this to Junos FTP. You know, we don't want to be matching on other stuff besides just FTP traffic. We could skin you this down a little bit with the source and destination address as well, but we're good enough with just saying the application FTP. So if anything else comes through, such as SCP, we don't want to do the extra processing of calling the app clause rule set and then finding out it doesn't match anything there and sending it through. I mean, you can do that, but that's just not the most efficient way to do it. Then we got to set the permit. Application traffic control, and then we specify that rule set. And notice that in the current form here, nothing that's going between the office and the servers is going to ever hit that FTP clause policy. So we need to insert that uh, FTP clause policy before that office to servers because that office to servers policy is basically a permit all policy. And so this is going to allow us to actually hit that app clause rule set with FTP traffic. So we'll go ahead and commit that. All right, so now that commit is complete, we're going to do some transfers. Here we're going to be transferring to the server using FTP. Let's go ahead and log in. All right, so let's transfer a test file here. It's a large file. And this doesn't look too good. We've got some going, some bytes per second. It's kind of all over the place. You're going to see it drop back to zero here in a second. And this is all because of that small burst size limit. So we're just going to abort that connection. And then we're going to jump back to the CLI and make a change there. All right, so back in the CLI, we're going to edit that rate limiter. See, we had that burst size limit really low. We're going to set that a little higher, 150,000. 
that may seem like a lot. The first time I got looking into this, started using Avcog, that seemed like a really a large amount, but it's okay because we'll burst out a little bit and then we'll come back down. So it's just initial burst, it won't be that big of a deal, and it's not going to be tons either. 150,000 seems deceptively large, but it's not. So it's something you're going to want to play around with if you're planning on deploying AppQuas in your network to get the right amount of burst size limit. All right, since that commit is complete, let's jump over and make that transfer again. See the difference when we do that. Delete that old test file image. Let's copy this again. And this is going to look a lot better. You know, we're shooting for around 3 megabits per second. And this is a little over with the kilobytes. This is in kilobytes right here, this notation. And so about 300, 320 kilobytes per second is about 3 megabits per second. So we're around that. That's kind of what we're shooting for. Things are looking good here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cancel that transfer. We see that the speed is where we want it. And we're going to jump back to... Uh, actually, what we'll do here is we'll cancel this session... And we'll open an SCP session. And as we do this, you know, we don't want to see rate limiting here. We were only wanting to rate limit the actual uh, FTP traffic. We didn't want to rate limit SCP traffic. So we're using SCP here. Deleted that old image that we transferred before. Let's copy this over. See how it goes. That's a lot faster than we were getting around 320-ish, 340-ish before with the FTP transfer. Now we're getting close to 10,000 kilobytes per second. You know, that's that's about pushing as fast as it can go, as fast as that FTP server that I have here locally can handle. So it's actually getting close, I want to say around uh, 80, or it's, it's about as fast as it can go here. And so I'm not going to try to do the math in my head like I was trying to do there. But anyhow, this is awesome. This is what we want. We wanted to rate limit FTP uploads. We did not want to rate limit SCP uploads. And so we got exactly what we needed there. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning bite. You know, in this learning bite, we discussed the functions of app clause, and then we did a demonstration on some rate limiting to show you how that worked show you how we could rate limit one type of traffic while allowing another traffic to go through the box without AppQuas touching it. And something else I do want to point out is there's some other commands we could have ran to verify AppQuas was working. Uh, there wasn't really time in this learning bite to do that at this point. We're kind of running a little long. Uh, those commands, though, if you're interested, like, uh, for example, we could have done the show class of service application traffic control counter to see the counters there. And then we could see some rate limiter statistics by doing the show class of service application traffic control statistics rate limiter so if you're interested you know go check out those commands that's something that is helpful in verifying using app clause that's the end of this learning bite and so as always thanks for watching visit the juniper education services website to learn more about courses view our full range of classroom online and e-learning courses learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.